Right guys, we're at a cottage in the Lake District, we're in Kirkby Longsdale, are we not? Yeah, That's Kirkby right. Longsdale, and we've got the open fire going, which uh, our friend Aging Hippie has uh, been doing it. We're uh, all here now, we've got the, the crew for our Natori weekend, the John Meister. So what we're going to do is, we've, it's Friday, we just got in, we're going to have a fire, we're going to have dinner, we're all going to get to know each other, and then we'll start trying on armour. So we'll come back to you when we start getting Pete's armour out and uh, getting dressed up. Right guys, we're just looking at Tachi versus Katana, and we're looking, we've got them straight at the base here, and we're looking at the difference in curvature. Obviously I've got the Masashi Tachi, so it's quite a uh, Katana, so it's quite a long one. So the blade lengths are not too different, but you can see the curvature is different. I didn't bring my original this time, which I think is a cut down tachi because its curvature is massive. But it's, this is the Peter's sword. And what we have got one question, guys. If you can see, this is, um, it's not obviously true Damascus steel, but it's got the uh, pattern welding in it. Are these just, how is this? It doesn't show on the video, guys. This Damascus steel sort of pattern welded um, pattern, does anyone know if that's just cheaply put into the blade because we're thinking surely this is not real pattern welded steel for this price anyone any information out there uh, right so guys we're just looking at charlie and uh, aging hippies um katana but where's this from blade uk blade uk yeah so the big question i think most people have is how good is their blade versus a, a traditional blade which you know the 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 real issue comes with actually traditionally they did produce cheap shit blades so as well as master class ones this is what the the pro common misconception is so we just don't know how good, good the blades are compared to traditional ones. I'm just starting to think something uh, aging. Hippies. We've just got aging hippies a uh, collection of tools here. Look at the beasts on that. Look at it. That is a heavyweight thing. That I think it was Andrew Throwburn's idea. So there you go, Andrew Throwburn. They've made them. And this is Andrew's from Thailand. Is this from Thailand? Yeah. 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 Mr. Throwburn's design was it? I think did he design it, or he's got it from an old place. It's designed from an original one way back. I think. Right. Not sure. Right, we're just looking at Lindsay's stuff here. He's got some magician type stuff, and we're looking at some illusion type things. And this is, uh, was it just flash paper? It's just flash. It, right. It, it'll blind you for a split second. Yeah. Okay. Mm. <laughs> So I'm just here, Pete put you under that. So this is the quick rope, Natori says it's three. People try to use thick rope, and what we, what Natori says is don't try with thick rope straight away, use a quick rope. Obviously I can't hook into Peter's hand, so um, what you'd imagine is this has gone into the hand, the hook, and you're gonna pull, and you're gonna start pulling people down. You're gonna be punching him, you're gonna be doing whatever you want, and you're gonna subdue him to the point where he's down, and then, and only then you start putting complicated knots on. The other two are, the other two are inside the cheek. So I would suggest you probably put that inside of there and you'll be slapping this and it'll go in and then you can rip it down or the other one is in through the back of the ear. Again, okay, what we just talked about that is sometimes people may not notice that their ear's been pulled off if they're really, really going for it. So I would personally say my favourite is the hand, but they're the three for Nato Ryu. I know other schools do other stuff. But the moral of the tale is don't try to m manipulate or capture people with these complicated knots until they have given up their subdued and you've pulled them down and restrained them. And don't forget you can also do it in teams. Right, at the minute we've got the nice fire going. We're all having a lovely chat. We've all shown each other our weapons. Some men's weapons are bigger than others. You must have been telling me stories about you again. Name the film. Braveheart, Brave. come on. Uh, yeah. Some men are longer than others. Yeah. Your mother been telling you stories about me again, yeah? <laughs> right, okay. Crazy Irish boy. Yeah. <laughs> he says, I'm fine, but you're fucked. <laughs> so we're going through the different um, wounds and we've got uh, spear, so these are triangular and diagonal. We've got bullet wounds, we've got naginata wounds, we've got tachi wounds, we've got arrow wounds. Nicely, Natori talks about stabbing with both Naginata and Tachi as well, so he talks about the stab wounds. Uh, of course, you'll have to read it in the book, but we're going to go through that now and uh, look at the different wound patterns. Yeah. Right guys, we've got the fire going and I've got Yoshi bought me for my birthday uh, a Natori Ryu brand. So we're about to brand Charlie when he gets back. <laughs> so let's stick it in the fire and let's see if we can uh, get that heated up. I've just pulled it out. Look at that, that's mint, I'll have to do less. I'm trying, this is the first time I've used it. It's getting cool now. 
There you go. Right, where are we doing it? Where do you want it? On the side, on the... There. Scabbard. Oh, beautiful. Oh, nice. That. Right, we're all eating at the minute, and John has brought with him some sake, and he's warming it in hot water. So we're all going to try sake. And, uh, very good education. And we're going to try doing the, um, nine ways of drinking soon. Nine ways of drinking sake. My face is regularly with sat next to the fire. I'm boiling. Right, we've got a uh, Pete here. He's what? getting all his armor out. What? We've got a martial arts conversation going on over here. But we're feeding Isui Sensei so Natori's death tablet. So we've got him some sake, and I reckon he likes chocolate. I'm down with that. Yeah. But there we go. So uh, this belief, disbelief, it's up to you. But you know, pay respect to where the information is coming from. And we burnt. We got the uh, we got the uh, brand on there, which is quite nice. This one was difficult. We didn't get it quite right because it's on a curve. My book. And we've got the book going, which is quite good. So there we go, we've got it in the uh, in the leather stroke plastic of it. A couple of weeks ago, John did a seminar and he got a, a fan given to him by Takahashi, which is uh, one of the people who came over for the uh, Sekiguchi Youth Seminar. And he brought him uh, the Natori Kamon um, fan, which is a mint present. That's top that. Yeah, I am that. jealous. Most jealous. We're going to go on, Pete. Okay, generally with Japanese armor, you start basically with the clothing, then build your way up. It always starts from the bottom left, and it's always from left to right. There are a few living um, examples of them. Are they? Yeah, uh, see if you look on, um, what's it called, the Wayne's Armoury. Yeah. It'll be a big, massive, but it's leather on top of it. Yeah, that's what we're talking about, the leather on top. Where I was reading it the other day, and I think it was Ian Bottomley from the Leeds Armoury, and he has... He mentions how they have leather on top of the, uh, over it. It's, um, generally you'd see more like uh, a Shigari and that actually wearing this type of dough. But they were really well made ones that were worn by, um, by retainers. And they were also ones that were basically... Hopefully this will... And that's caught here. So we're just at the minute, we're just putting the outer obby on, which is, if we get to the book, we're in the book here, we're actually on page 150, and we're on, there we are, the outer obby, as you can see. So we're going through the steps of armour, for those who have got the book, and it's page 99, sorry, page 149 and 150. Right. Generally what you would do with this is kind of crisscross it. And there would be, like on your wakazashi, a hook. Yep. It would actually sit there, and it would be round about here. Hook on, we're talking about this hook here, guys. So if you look, there's a hook on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hook on to so it. you should all pretty much on your wakazashi get them on it. I just use normal tape and, you know, a hook from B&Q. Yeah. But you can actually buy them oh. traditionally done, but, you know, it's only yeah. practice. Mm -hmm. It's the first time Pete's done it reverse, not on himself. Well, then I might have mucked this up a bit. It should rest on the balls of the feet, and the toes should overhang. Mm -hmm. Is that that tight? Right, guys, what we've made here is a quick um, sword cord. So uh, the cord for the sword itself. This is just ad hoc, I've just got a bit of paracord. We've got a slip knot in this end, so you can slip and open it. You pass that over the wrist. And you go about, you tighten that. Don't forget, remember, you can pull that off. I've, I've actually done some research in Japanese books. So this isn't from Natori, this is from the actual books. Uh, we've seen uh, Japanese historians do it. So pull, draw your sword. And then what happens is, if uh, don't drop the sword, obviously, but you, you'll you see that it, it can, it's there on a, on a cord. And that means <laughs> we're in a bit of an enclosed space, so we can't just randomly pull it up. And you can pull the sword back up. You just take it out for me again. Uh, can you let it drop down uh, slowly? Just drop it down. That's right. Now, can you? I want you to just jerk it up without. That's it. So, right, guys. As you see, as the swords drop down, he's on horseback or he's in a battle. He can just do this. Yep, and he can pull it back up. That's what it was. And it's on a slip in case he needs to throw his sword away and slip it down. Right. So, if he wants, yep, go for it.
in full samurai armor with a waterproof torch made by Peter. This is Peter's armor. That's pretty, pretty cracking that, John. You look the uh... So, John, could you go and stand over in the darkness? Like, over there, guys, it's pitch black. Obviously, the cameras don't catch it. But John's going to go walk over there. And just have a walk around, John. Where's John Paul with his uh, night vision? Right, what you do, this is where it talks about in the Shonen key, you get a fan or something like that, you get your katana and you make like a T-shape on the top. Now go right, John. And that is with the ninja skill of you. Come and have a look, guys, if you want. Yeah. Obviously, you'll see the video it's on YouTube anyway. But night, it? Yeah, so you can see. see. Yeah. Uh, are you, have you got your shoes on, Mason? Yeah. Yeah, come round here, mate. Keep doing it for me, John. Go left and right again, sorry. Don't get bored walking around and with fire. <laughs> so, can you see that there? See that light? Yeah. At night, you can see, that's where you can tell... Little frame. Uh, you can see if somebody's going left or right. Um, you know, because it's quite far away, you get disoriented, yeah. but they also come closer and further away. Yeah. But when, depending on what type of torch they go. So, if you come closer, John, I want you to hold the torch at your feet. Now I'll adjust it so you got the. There it's going below. You can see it's yep. going below the horizon. Yep. Like that. So as it's getting closer, it goes below the horizon. Again. However, do it again, John, can you for me? With the torch up this time. What's your fingers? <laughs> can you put it on the horizon? Now come towards us with it up. Can you see now it's going? Yep. Can you see it's lifting off the horizon? There you yep. go. It's getting closer. Yep. So depending on the type of torch and depending on the weather, it'll either go up or down according to basic yep. physics, you yep. know what I mean? No, so, but that is you also in Natoriu you also use you also use Definitely. this for sea warfare when you're tracking boats yeah, yeah. and you'll track which uh, nautical traffic is going left or right, things like that. Well John, how do you feel? Pretty good. Pretty Very awesome. Very good. Right, give somebody a go on the torch before. Everyone have a go on the go torch, on, have some. Go, it should, technically, not go out. You know what I mean? That is a windproof out? torch. Mm -hmm. They do go out, don't get me wrong. Oh, sugar. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's you didn't impressive. Take it. I'm glad nobody died then. <laughs> I would have made for an interesting one. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Robin, I took a wind I did. to the chest. <laughs> <laughs> I did say before I left, if I don't come back dead or with some severe injury, I've not had a good weekend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, nearly. <laughs> we nearly had a burnt <laughs> face, Dad. Nanissa <laughs> <laughs> says, come back carrying your shit. Uh, oh, Ronnie. Ronnie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ronnie, right. Oh, she's watching. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I wonder who. Is it filming, Pete? Yeah, it's filming now. Right, what you've got to remember, guys, is this is coming up. It should all be no jutsu, ninjutsu, is you've spat your torches off. You're like, right, it's going. And the enemy comes over there, we want to see. Right, now we can see into the enemy, you know, camp. And look at that, how it's illuminating now. So, let me keep the camera going. So, watch it now, keep the, uh, the camera. So you'd notice, there's no, look how dark it is. Yeah, look how dark it is. Ooh. And there we go, we've got an illumination. And what you do is like 30 or 40 people will throw that into an area and then you can see Shinobi like that's where it is. Right, very quickly guys. We're nearly out of torch. Pete didn't bring us five more. <laughs> right, go on John. Be careful, go ahead of everyone because otherwise it's a bit dangerous. 
They'll love it. <laughs> it fell off on the floor next to you, John. <laughs> <laughs> the problems of war. Right, this is uh, when you get when you go into war, you get your orders for war, which are called jimbore. But you have to actually do a ceremony, which is preparing you for war. So you'll be probably sitting on your own. Uh, you'll be inside your residence, and in front of you, you'll have a tray, and you'll have three cups of sake, and you'll have two pieces of food. Uh, well, there's actually three pieces of food, but two of them have meaning. So the first one, this is all. It's not complicated, but it is a play on words in Japanese. So the first one you say. Uh, it's a type of food, and the, the name of the food is a play on word to no defeat. Yep. So he'll be like, first thing he'll do is reach across, he'll get it, and he'll be saying like, and he says something in Japanese, which means basically no defeat. So he'll say, no defeat. And he'll eat that food. And obviously, it's got to be done with a serene mind. He's probably, as I say, probably alone. alone. The next one he picks up is a different, um, ve uh, different vegetable, and the name of it means victory. So in his head, he's like, no defeat. Mm, and it's symbolic of no defeat. The next one... Victory. Is symbolic of victory. Now, after he's at those, what he has is he has three cups of sake. Now this is like called the nine cups or the nine sips of sake. And this um, is quite a famous Japanese ritual. But what we do find in Natoru Ryu is it gives you the, uh, the reasoning behind it, the different ones. Now what he has to do is he has to uh, take each cup but he doesn't lift the cup to his face, he puts his face to the cup and he takes nine sips. So the first sip is heaven. The second sip is earth. And the last sip is man. That's ten chi jin. Then he goes to the next one. Now this one is wisdom, benevolence, and courage. He's liking this, isn't he? <laughs> it's good training this. Oh and the, <laughs> the last one is um, beginning, middle, and end. And then what he does, you right there? <laughs> <laughs> what he does, we won't do it here, but quite literally he will grab this table and he will throw it to the side like woof. We're going to war. So that'll go smash over here. And then he lifts on his left leg, which is pretty difficult. Cause he's, and he'll stamp that down. Oh, sorry, mate. Let's grab that. Uh, he lifts on his left leg. And this is called the ka uh, sorry, Kachi Ashi, which means the leg of victory. And that's the left leg because it's yo. Now, the reason there are nine sips is because nine is the biggest male number in cosmic esoteric things. And uh, he will stand up on the left leg. So, and then he will stand up and he'll get ready to go to war. And that is his pre-war meal that he has his ritual to go to war with. So, and very quickly, just for the YouTube people, basically, in, this is my opinion, but you've got Ten Chi Jin, then it's Chi Jin Yu, and then it's Shou Chu Shu. So this, I think, again, is my opinion, it's connotations, and I think a bit of Sun Tzu comes in here. His first one is Heaven, Earth, and Man. Heaven is whether, you know, uh, cosmic uh, ideas and things like that. Second one is earth. You've got to think about terrain in warfare. We've got to think about mountains. We've got to think about how we're going. And man is yourself or your comrades. The next one is wisdom. Obviously, wisdom is needed in warfare. Benevolence is where you make sure you are you know, nice to the general people. But you also need courage. Then, of course, something that Natori speaks about is beginning, middle and end. This is show, chew, shoe. And everybody doesn't understand that. People start things at the beginning. But what they don't realise is there's an end. You've got to pre-plan everything to the end, yeah? So this covers the world around you, your internal ideas, and then the non-physical, the situations, the beginning, the middle and end, guys. And that is a summarised um, meal before war. Right, guys, at the minute we're just making a floating camphor. Um, bullets, basically, or pellets. And uh, what's this? Is it just pine? Is it pine resin? Uh, What's this? Uh, we think it's just ordinary pine wood. Pine, pine wood. Pine. Might be a bit of You can smell the summit in it. You can smell some sort of resin in it. We're getting dripping candle wax in it as the binder. Uh, you said you used hemp oil last hemp time. Hemp oil, yeah. Yeah, and they, they reduced it down. And then we've put, going to get some camphor in it. And uh, we're going to build the pellet. 
Right, at the minute guys, we're on page 90 and this is uh, the pocket candle. So basically here we're mixing um, camphor, we've not got the alcohol, we're replacing it with the pine and uh, the glue which is the wax in this case. And we are making it and this is so you carry them as a ball and you can throw it in dark places, ca travel, carry it while you're travelling, things like that. Right, we're going on a bit of a meander to the river. That's, um, we're just missing a couple of Pete's half in samurai gear. We're all off to try and use the camphor now. Right guys, we're at the, uh, as you can see we've got John down there. It's quite a fast flowing river and he's, uh, he's right next to it because he's been hammering it down today. So he's come up this little path here. And we're just going to get to see this um, camphor torch. See how well it works. Cool as. There we go. The problem is the river's coming onto us but yeah. in fact let me get it down. So there you go guys, that's fire in the hand. Yeah, so you look around, you need a bit of um, torchlight. Can you see there, it's pretty, pretty damn good. So that is in Nato Ryu, the light that you can carry in your hand into dark places. Don't get me wrong, it's, it's hot, but it's not mega hot. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm not spit maybe, but it's not that hot. It's just like wax. Right guys, it's, um, it is Saturday morning and we have just had coffee and tea and all that. And the minute we're going through seppuku, we're going through the different forms we've found. Really and he's, uh, that's all right, he's tying up uh, Charlie. Charlie, give us a smile. Hi, and we've just been discussing how to ritually kill people, which is always nice on a Saturday morning. Um, and what we're going to do now is talk about uh, how to execute a criminal versus actual ritual suicide. Right, we've got a Charlie making a shuriken. Uh, he's been making a shuriken throwing board. So uh, they put Chen as well. Yeah. The Chen one is you know when you roll back from the Tai Chi. Yeah. The Chen roll back is roll back. Oh yeah. Right, guys, we've got Peter here. He's made this kit, and uh, he's got a reversible jacket. So I'll show us the uh, jacket, Pete. Now Pete's hand stitched this himself. So for example, somebody says, oh, you know, I've just had an altercation. Oh, there's an issue with a guy wearing a crimson jacket. And he would just simply swip it around and then black one. And people are looking for people in a crimson. The other one is, uh, he's going to do it again. But basically, he's got, we're on out at night. You know, this is his normal stuff. Doing some shinobi, doing some night missions, whatever. He just changes it to black. Have you got your tenner gooey, Pete? Yeah. Where's your tenner gooey? Oh, what a star! And it's black. Now, can you put it over your head? This is one of the, um, I think it's the five sections of the tenner gooey. This goes over the head. And you pull it down. And that is what you use the tenner gooey for. And that you see now, he's gone from pretty much crimson to black. And close the front for me. Oh, uh, sorry, this. You know, as much as you can. You can see if he wanted to, he could be almost totally black. Then Peter used the uh, Bansen Shukai one where you hide your face with the, um, the sleeve. And there you go. It's basically changed into full. Pretty much Shinobi get up if you want, but that is... How you use a reversible kimono. Well done, Peter, that's superb. That was really good. This is the one that he said wouldn't throw. Apparently it does. Nice. So like that when you stick them. Wow, oh, 
They're heavy as hell and they knock everything out, don't they? <laughs> they are some beat meaty ones, them. You're more well off, you know? Yeah. Higher rank and so on. John made me sign his books. All of them at once. Cheers, John. Got, I think I broke my hand. <laughs> I have to pay you back. You broke my hand. <laughs> broke his finger. Yeah. It's all right. Uh, it's only got. He's got another one. Yeah, I've got a spare. This one's a lot simpler. I remember. We had a technical discussion on knots. Right, we're going for a father and son. Um, they will go through the hawk technique in a minute. Father teaching his son. Fight's going quite well. <laughs> Pete's becoming good at the old armour, he's got loads of knowledge at the minute. Right Charlie, there he is, he's, we've got an Ashigaru there with Daisho, uh, he's got his Hachimaki on, it's going a bit open, and we've got the uh, Samurai there, which is his father, so we've got a father and son team here, going on. How's it feel chaps? It's actually, yeah, surprisingly light. Yeah. It's amazing, it's surprisingly comfortable. Well, we wouldn't wear it for a month. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've got freedom of movement. Can you crouch down, see how you crouch, and have a crouch and... Just see the chairs behind you, that's why. So left leg first when you get up. Yep, cool. Nice. Have we got the crest for his helmet? Oh yeah, I know. Okay, so you're trying to catch down and the guy beneath you is resisting. You're not going to get anywhere. So you get out of the way, crack him in the head repeatedly. And the idea so is to go through his eye. Uh, through the eye. You've eyes. got to go through the eye. And, uh, you know, when it's mush, you can stop. Because <laughs> <laughs> what's Right, hold on. Right guys, we're to uh, Sunday after, uh, Saturday afternoon. And basically what we're doing is we're, uh, we're discussing how far should you take Zen in, in martial arts and, and we're talking about avoiding the bullshit Zen people basically and what I like to term pond sitters. And uh, we're discussing how much should you interact with Zen versus how much should you try and project how Zenful you are. So we're getting into a bit of a deep discussion here. It's quite good. Obviously I can't film it, but just so you know, we're spending a couple of hours doing that. Cool. Right chaps, what we're doing at the minute, we've just gone through Castle Construction, we've come up with 25 points on uh, Castle Construction from everything from hidden entrances to um, moats, we've got armories, we've got vehicle access, we've got um, killing zones, we've got the walls outside of gates to make sure that you can't get in or there's no direct attack, we've been going through all this and we've obviously got onto cheese and biscuits because it's that time of the night. For those in America, this is what English living's about. Open fires, cheese and biscuits. Open fires, cheese and biscuits. <laughs> and cider. And, uh, and that's pretty much what we do in England, isn't it? <laughs> and we're sitting on a fire. We all own castles in England, don't we? Yeah. Everyone's got one. Oh. And um, we're going to do that. And now we're moving on to striking at night time and moving at night time. If you remember last time, we're talking about crouching down the utterances, listening for people. We're talking about being armoured and unarmoured in combat and things like that. So Pete's about to do the left-handed sword draw. Nice. One more time, Pete. So Pete's about to do the left-handed sword draw. Now we've just discovered, actually, we've got a question here directly for Andrew Throwburn. So I didn't think about. Uh, we were talking about traditionally, do samurai wear their sword through their hakama? Now I know in uh, some Kori they do, you say through the Hakama, show the Hakama. So this is when you fight in a crowd, uh, we were discussing the difference between putting the sword in the middle of the legs by taking it out or leaving it in the obby. But if you're in Hakama you can't do it. Try it, Peter. So you can't get it to the middle of the legs. I told Andrew, this personal message for you Andrew, I totally forgot about this, what do you think mate? Like you can't get it to the middle of the legs because you, it's your Hakama in the way. So what do you reckon guys, we're we back to taking it out. 
or is it a case that um, in when you're in just kimono or you have your obby you can definitely put it between your legs if you've got hakama on you probably can't put it between your legs because the sword's gone through the hakama you know there's lots of questions here that we've got to answer for such a simple thing left-handed ah remember now breathe out go on breathe out as hard as you can there you go If you don't do that, breathe out and lock the sword next to the obby, you will, you know, it'll come out. Right. What you need to do as well is try not to just use your arm so much. You need to use the entire body when you shift something. Don't be scared about dropping the hips. Don't be scared about manipulating the feet, manipulate hands. Use your entire body to get that thing out. Okay, so drop hips and... Yep. Yeah. A, that's better. We're just an hand, you know, you're, you're a little bit. Yeah. Cool. Dancing in a circle. <laughs> okay, recording. So, that's all right. Fade to black. <laughs> right, so we've just been talking, guys. Um, we've finished the side of cheese and wine. We've just been talking, and what it says in Natori, it says, if somebody looks blackish, then they're a strong soldier. And this is Yoshie's opinion, and I agree with her. But what this means is, when you've got the sun coming down, you've got the peak of your cap, you've got all your equipment there, those who look up and are a little bit nervous and agitated, their faces will look white. Those who are set poised will look in shade and a bit darkish. Also, when you start seeing light behind them, you know they're a bit erratic. So when everything's tight, closed in, the face is in the shade, and when you look at the top of the flag and it's bent forward, you know they're a, they're a hard troop. So they're, when they move in unison, so one, two, Three, you can see this at a distance. They're shaded, the flags forward, they move together, but they fight independently. That is a really hard troop. When you see the faces up and there's light, you can see light passing through them as they're moving. That they, they sort of move their spears in one like single form. You know that they've had just basic training and they're not really moving together. You know it's a weak troop. So what you should do is actually attack that troop, the weakest troop, if you can. Hold well on. Right guys, uh, we've had a bit of bit of a snack and everything. Um, we are now. I, we've been going through armor. We've had the armor on. We've been going through images of armor. Pete's got a big collection of images. We're going through the different stuff, different Edo block prints. Now I'm going to try and uh, learn how to tie these because I have actually never had a go. So I'm going to have my first go at doing this. So let's see how it goes. Right guys, in the in Natori, it actually says that um, when you want to cut, you don't want to be cutting. You know, it doesn't say don't cut like this, but we're discussing swordsmanship. And the idea it says in Natori is that you've got to come forward and with a feeling in mind, it's pull cut. So you move forward, pull, and you actually cut with this side of it. So I've got this idea that probably Sengoku period or early Edo period, there wasn't this type of Koryu style massive cutting. Uh, it was more of a cut, cut, and this feeling. And Natori talks about your place on and cut. And um, especially if you watch Katori Shinto Ryu, they come under the uh, wrists and cut. And I just think there's a lot more we can discover by going into this idea that swordsmanship might have been a little bit different. Natori himself has said in Book of Five Rings, you grip with those two, relax with those two, and uh, you need to hit with this part of the sword. And then when the enemy's coming forward, you put it on, hold your breath, and strike. And that is a strike, <laughs> like that. Right, sorry guys, I've not really um, recorded since last night. Uh, it's now nearly midday on the Sunday, and we're about to, we've just cleared the room. I'm about to do some basic movement, just to get some back to basic stuff. Um, Got to get everyone in their hakama, and uh, get a photograph taken, and then we'll go. How is everyone this morning? Fine. Yeah, happy? Bright and cheerful. Bright and cheerful, that's what I like to see. Here we go guys, we're looking on uh, an armoured headband. It does talk about this in Natori Youth, as a, but mainly a chainmail one. But we've got metal plates on it, that's, that's excellent. It's been made by John, which is quite cool. Is it a specific type of chainmail link? Oh, Have well, you copied any uh, Yeah, yeah so I copied the, the Japanese kind of weaver. Cool. It's a little bit too expansive, uh, the next one I'm making a bit closer together. Excellent. No, it's good, good, good stuff. It's very, very heavy duty, isn't it? Yeah. That is proper solid. Right, guys, we're uh, we're just getting the old kit on again. Try and get in and out of kit as much as possible. They've used quite nicely. They've used white belts here just to, as temporary ones, so that's quite not bad. They were quite nice actually. 
John with his metal headband on. But yeah, full kit up there, that's quite nice chaps, it looks good, it looks really good. Right guys, what we've been doing at the minute is um, studying, sitting down and I and Yoshi have been reading recently about Seiza in Japan and how it's only more of a, when I say modern, I mean modern in, inter, in quotations. Uh, it's less of a Sengoku early Edo period thing. Most people would sit cross-legged, but we've still not got to the bottom of this year. There's still a lot of research to do. But we've been reading that tea masters used to sit cross-legged. Um, obviously males in Japan happen to sit cross-legged. And that Seiza is more of um, a formal stroke maybe subjecting people to like when you go in front of someone of a much senior uh, position you would sit in Caesar. but we've still got research to do on that guy so it's still not clear uh, right but apart from that we're gonna just basically we're gonna do some basics by sitting down with a sword next to you and standing up and putting the swords in and out and just get some pure basics done right we've uh we had a sit down and uh, just a little talk about movement and how to move from standing up, from kneeling down, getting back up, things like that, and not using the hands. And we've moved on to something called the Path of Arrows. So, the Path of Arrows is called Yamichi. And what this means is, can you see here, we've got the Path of Arrows and you've got arcs of fire and tra um, projectile trajectory. So what we're looking at here is you've got people who are ornate and they've got beautiful armour on, you know full well there's going to be an arc of fire this way and a trajectory this way. You know full well, say there's a mass there. You've got some people who are really running up and going for it. These guys are going to get shot at. So what you're looking for is negative space in between. You're looking for the places where there's going to be less fire. And that, as a Nato Ryu student, you need to move up that path. Of course, this is all invisible, because once the arrow's been shot, it's disappeared. You have to imagine this in your mind. So what you'll need to do, guys, is when you're looking at, um, you know, battlefields, or you're looking at mob fights or whatever, whatever you're doing, learn to find the negative space. Hey, this is Aging Hippie, and apparently his wife is so annoyed with me saying, Hi guys, my name's Anthony Cummins. So here's a message for aging hippie's wife. What's your name? What's Christine. your wife? Christine. Christine. Hi guys, my name's Anthony Cummins. <laughs> <laughs> right guys, what we're doing at the minute is we're just talking about uh, the distance between the vanguard and the second troop. If you have no distance here, if the second troop are right up against the vanguard, if the vanguard crumble, it will crumble into the second troop which means that you'll get a mass hysteria and everybody start falling over. So the key here is to have a gap between the forward troops and the secondary troops to make sure that you've got that barrier of space and time so you don't turn to chaos. Also, what we've also just had is a conversation on this. Sorry, I actually screwed the piece of paper up to put in the fire but and then forgot I hadn't videoed you chops. So what we've got here is imagine the enemy are still in formation and they're pushing backwards. Everybody here has started routing and they've actually started to spread. You have something called Shingari. These are those who s defend the retreat. This stops them from coming forward ex too fast to kill everyone. The reason for this is you've got something called the Dragon Banner. And the Dragon Banner is what everybody rallies around. So you need enough time to rally back to your Dragon Banner. So make sure, it's all about timing in warfare. You need to make sure you've got time to breathe and reform. Right guys, what we're doing is this is uh, the idea of when you're being robbed uh, in that area. It can be for the light, modern day, it can be a wallet or whatever. The idea is don't fight the opponent. Give them what they need, let them turn around and walk away and then kill them. Uh, give me that. Right. Yeah, you see, the idea is, and then this time do it again guys. Um, but let him turn around fully, let him like, and take on a defensive, uh, sorry, take on a, a weak posture, right. you know. You're def sorry, yeah, that's the word I'm looking for, defeated. Give me that. Give it, you've got plenty of time, yeah. Boom. Kill him. The idea is once he thinks he's won, he's, you know, and you're defeated and you're coward, he's going off laughing. Yeah. But you just kill him. So let him think that. The other one is go back there. And the idea is this is, uh, there's two ways with a light. If he comes up to you and you've got a torch, point the torch at his face. So imagine you've just yeah. got a normal hand touch. Point. He doesn't like that. He's gonna. Back, most people back away from light in their eyes. So to always stop someone straight away, be a bit more assertive. Like shove get that. Yeah, shove it in the face. He will back off. <laughs> Nobody likes it. Of course, then there's a next step where he's probably going to try and find his way out. The other one is if you've got a light source, give it to him. Give him the light source. And he's like, now, now step backwards into the darkness. Obviously, he's going to step around the couch. Get in the darkness. 
The idea is you always fight from the darkness. He is going to be trying to find you with a torch. Move to dark, move to dark, move to dark. Even though he can hear you, the idea is he can't see you. So and nobody's that good where they can sort of hear. Oh, he's going to do such a cut because he can hear you in such a step. Rubbish. Yeah? So make sure when there's a circle of light around. Do you remember when we threw the torch the other night? That circle of light, get outside that circle of light. And then you can throw stuff at him. Or, you know. <laughs> right, guys, it's now about four o'clock on the Sunday, just after. And uh, you can see there, Charlie is getting in his car. They're going. It has been raining. He's probably had two breaks in the rain for three days. I'm not joking. It's just that rain. You can hear the type of rain where you know it's not going to stop. And it has been going and going and going. And it is all waterlogged. We were meant to be doing some training out there and everything. And of course, we did do on one night, it was raining and we got the cameras wet and we got everybody muddy and all that. But if you keep doing it, you have no more clothes to wear. So we've um, obviously gone for the soft option by getting next to the fire, as you can see in the reflection. So uh, Charlie's going, that leaves us with Lamarckster and um, John's in the kitchen. So we're pretty much going to start wrapping up now and just have a bit of a chat tonight and then we'll call it quits and then people can just talk normal things so warfare over um but i'll do one more video say goodbye no. right right guys it is new we've got john left and we've got mark at the door in there somewhere so yeah there he is and we have pretty much finished it's sunday evening it's dark outside um we as we showed you the video of Charlie and his dad leaving, they actually got stuck in the mud and the flat battery. So we had to uh, sort all that out. And then we've pretty much finished, haven't we? Yeah. We've done the weekend. Next year, 2016, I'm just talking to these, I need to see some independent workshops being started. So I won't be there, but you guys will be organising it. And these people who've been, like Peter's been twice now, uh, John's been, we've got these people, John Bly's been. Start organising it yourselves and do something without me. So that'll be good. Right, guys, we've had a good weekend. It's We're going to stay for one more night, but we're packing everything up now. Everything's getting packed up, and we're just going to chill out and talk. Uh, so, right, okay, uh, subscribe if you need to know more, and hopefully I'll see some of you next year or the year after.